Unicast, Multicast, Broadcast, and Anycast. I'm David Staples, and those are today's topics coming up right now. So if you've been studying for the A+, Network+, Security+, or one of the Cisco exams like the CCEMT or the CCNA, you might have come across some terms such as unicast, multicast, broadcast, or anycast. And of course, those are used on a very regular basis throughout our everyday connections to the internet and other types of local networks. So what are they? Well, these are various different types of network transmissions that we use every day, and most of us probably don't realize it, but those of us who work in the technology field or in the networking field specifically let's see these things whenever we're looking at you know, maybe a packet capture when we're packet sniffing. So let's talk about the different types of packets that we're looking at here. So starting off with a unicast. A unicast is a one-to-one -one transmission. We're sending from one device directly to another device, say a computer to a server like a client server architecture or from a computer to another computer or even server to server. This is a one-to-one -one communication. So when do we use a unicast? Well, let's say that I'm uploading a file to an FTP server. That is a connection between me directly to that one FTP server, right? Let's say that I'm browsing YouTube, as you're doing right now. Of course, that is also a one-to-one -one communication. You're talking directly to one of the servers at YouTube, or Facebook, or Twitter, or wherever you happen to be at the time. Now, it's also great for things like SMTP. When you're sending an email, you only really need to talk to that one server. It's great for checking email, whether you're using POP3 or IMAP or some other sort of protocol. So these are all one-to-one -one communications that all fall under the unicast umbrella. So let's talk about multicast. Multicast is a one-to-multiple or one-to-many. So when would we use something like that? Well, let's say that you are in a web conference with several of your coworkers, and we know that you know, if I was to send out one packet to each of those users individually, just on one-to-one -one basis, that that would be five or six times the amount of traffic that I would otherwise need to send if I could use multicast, right? So it's great for things like web conferencing, it's great for things like maybe some sort of a chat software that you may be using, where I send out one packet and anyone who's a member of that multicast group will actually be able to receive that packet. So that is our multicasting. Now we've also got something called a broadcast, and this is a one to everyone, one to all type of transmission. So, for instance, when you join a network for the first time and you're using DHCP, essentially what happens is we actually send out a broadcast that says, hey, who is the DHCP server here? Because obviously when I join the network for the first time, I don't know who the DHCP server is, right? So I send out a broadcast. It's a one to everyone that's asking, hey, who's the DHCP server here? And, of course, the DHCP server should respond directly to me saying, I'm the DHCP server, and we'll go ahead and start that process of, leasing an IP address. Now, the last one of these that I mentioned broadcast is actually just IP version 4 or IPv4 specific. Now, in IPv6 or IP version 6, we know that we've actually moved away from broadcast, and we actually now are using something called anycasting. Uh, anycast is a one-to-neighbor or one-to-next, one-to-nearest type of transmission. So when would I use something like this? Well, let's say that I'm browsing YouTube. And we know that YouTube probably has a bunch of data centers all around the world, kind of like Facebook and Google and some of the other large platforms, right? Now, would it be more efficient for me to talk to my nearest data center? Or would it be more efficient for, since I'm in California right now, would it be more efficient for me to talk to a server in Sweden or maybe Japan or somewhere else? Well, I know that it would be more efficient and faster for me to talk to a server perhaps in Silicon Valley here somewhere, right? Now, I travel all the time, though, so maybe when I'm back in Atlanta, maybe I'm talking to one of the data centers on the East Coast. Maybe when I'm in New York or New Jersey or Connecticut or somewhere, maybe I'm talking to one of the data centers up in the Northeast. And this comes in pretty handy for being able to help kind of speed up these connections, because as we all know, users are very patient. We don't mind how long it takes a web page to download or how long it takes a video to stream over and all that buffering, everything. That's not a problem, right? <laughs> yeah, if you're like me, you're not patient enough to sit there and wait. Uh, so this anycasting basically is a one to next and one to or one to nearest type of communication. And while I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here, we'll just kind of cover just a little bit further in this with kind of how it works, where basically multiple devices end up sharing the same IPv6 address. 
and we're essentially trying to find who is the closest server or neighbor or client that actually is assigned that particular IPv6 address. I know normally we think, okay, well, more than one computer can't have the same IP address, and for the most part, that's true. In this kind of scenario, we're actually assigning the same IPv6 address to these different systems, and we're basically trying to find what the nearest instance of that is. So as I mentioned, broadcast is IPv4 specific, anycasting is IPv6 specific, and unicast and multicast are actually both used in IP version 4 or IP version 6. So I hope you found these explanations helpful. Uh, be sure to check out my other videos as well as the links in the description below. And for all of you who have already clicked on that subscribe button, I certainly appreciate it. And if you haven't already, why not? Go ahead and click on that subscribe button now. So if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But in the meantime, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.